Well, should we go ahead and get started? Okay. Sure. Well, it's six o'clock. Uh, my name is Ed John. I'm the interim principal at uh, Robert Frost. So excited to be there and so excited that uh, Leslie Roach is a phone call away. Um, so let me kind of share with you a few updates. And uh, then uh, if you have any questions, you can type them in the chat. And uh, Lainey and Kim will kind of uh, help me make sure I um, answer those before we end and we'll end at least by uh, 650. So here's kind of what we're working on. It's been kind of uh, getting kind of busy, kind of crazy, but uh, just today I worked up a, um, I have a welcome letter that I think we put in the mail either tonight or tomorrow morning, just kind of a little bit of introduction again. And um, here's some things we're working on and some updates. So that's uh, coming. Um, School supplies, uh, I think we have it online as well as there's a handout outside our door on a little table in a box if uh, people haven't had a chance to pick up that um, uh, that's available. Um, and also, I was thinking, if you know of any families that, hey, this is going to be a hardship for them to come up with uh, school supplies, if you send me an email, um, I think I can find some resources to get uh, school supplies for kids that need it. Uh, I don't want any uh, families to feel like they just can't afford school supplies for the kids. Uh, so we're sending out a packet uh, fairly soon uh, uh, that when we asked uh, uh, parents to come in uh, to bring back the forms in the packet and then to pick up the uh, uh, Chromebooks, uh, we're going to try to schedule some sort of a little drive through the parking lot and we'll have a little walkie talking somebody at one end saying oh yeah jamie smith is here and and then we find the uh, chromebook that's going to be assigned to jamie smith and so kind of a, a little gauntlet of uh, pick you up and uh, drop off and i'm going to invite the teachers if they want to come out that day kind of stand back uh, few feet with their mask on and wave, you know, wave to kids that they had last year, kids that they know. Uh, I think people would appreciate that. I know when uh, Stacy and the high school folks uh, did something, kind of a drive through the parking lot, kids love seeing their teachers that they haven't seen for a while. So I'll try to make sure we get that organized. I think it'd be good for the kids and be good for the teachers as well. So we'll get that organized. And so that uh, day, I think the Chromebook distribution day and that event day is uh, September 2nd. So we'll make sure that uh, that's communicated. Um, let's see, also in that internet access form that'll be in the packet, uh, if you know of any families that, uh, and hopefully they'll fill out that form and let us know, hey, we've got all the internet we need, we're in good shape. But if you know of any um, that it's going to be a hardship for them, uh, let me know. And I think the district uh, technology department will work hard to make sure that every family has some sort of uh, internet access so that kids can be successful. If, if they've got a, a internet that's uh, struggling and they're missing things and, and they've got uh, um, parents and older brothers and sisters on there too, it, it could be uh, complicated. So. If you know of anyone, uh, please let us know. But uh, we've asked for them to fill out that uh, little form, but sometimes people are hesitant to fill that out. And we want to make sure that everyone has the resources they need. Uh, one of the things that the uh, team leaders are going to be working on next week is a schedule. What's a schedule look like? And it's not either of these two extremes. One extreme is they're on the computer looking at that screen six hours a day getting assignments from a teacher. That's not going to happen. The other extreme is um, they log on and a teacher says, hey, how you doing? Here's your assignments. Uh, go ahead, go get them done. And uh, I'll do them on your leisure anytime in the evening. And they have to be in tomorrow and I'll check them all out. Well, there's somewhere in the middle uh, where there's some direct instruction. There's some time to do some work. There's some, going to be some time for some interaction Maybe uh, counselors help us with some social emotional learning. Maybe uh, PE teacher helping us with some sort of uh, uh, yoga or something. Hi, Elena. Uh, so we're going to try to make it at least uh, first thing in the morning, some kind of check-in. Here's activities for the day. Here's our plan. How are you doing? And you know how to uh, sign on to 
Google Meet, uh, you know how to uh, uh, mute your uh, phone or your uh, your recording. Um, so there'll be some training part, but uh, we're working on with the teacher leaders uh, what an ideal schedule looks like. And maybe it's a little bit different for third grade than fourth grade than fifth grade, but we're working on that. And um, I think you'll be very happy with it. Um, let's see, so the schedules will be, uh, the student class lists uh, will be posted on our door at uh, 4 p.m. on the 28th. Uh, but, you know, the good part is um, Leslie left us with uh, a great plan and a placement with the teachers from last year where they should be. Uh, Elizabeth and I went through some uh, uh, requests, tried to accommodate as many of those as we can. <coughs> but people are going to be pretty happy with the uh, class lists. Um, so when teachers come back there's going to be a couple weeks of training ingenuity training uh, canvas training and hopefully parents have had a chance to look at some of that uh, on the district website and some of those frequently asked questions because um, i wouldn't have time to answer all those uh, in this meeting but um, they've done a nice job of putting all those together might take a look at those but then after the training on september 14th we'll start our first day of uh, comprehensive distance learning and it's not going to be distance learning like last spring. It's going to be comprehensive. Uh, but I think there will be a good balance between some FaceTime on the screen with the teacher and some time with activities and some fun activities and just kind of helping kids stay connected and feel like uh, uh, there's curriculum and I'm learning. The neat thing about uh, ingenuity, it's a, a curriculum that is uh, uh, based on all the uh, core standards and so if we march through that ingenuity we're meeting the standards but it also gives teachers a little flexibility in adding some things to make it relevant and meaningful and maybe even fun or interesting so um, people that have had, had ingenuity are really pretty, pretty happy with it um, another thing that i think will be in the uh, letter elizabeth and i today just um, or more Elizabeth than me, uh, uh, scheduled um, picture day. And I think those are September uh, 12th and 14th. No, 14th is the first day of school. So picture days are 11th and, and 12th. And there's some flexible times uh, for evening as well as some during the day so we can try to uh, be accommodating for uh, parents. So uh, before we get to uh, any questions we might have, Leslie, are there things that I missed that we ought to make sure people are in the loop about? I think that's most of it. Um, I know that there has started to be some questions about, and you talked about schedules, what's the difference between synchronous and asynchronous? So if you haven't seen those terms yet, synchronous is a live Google Meets or time live with teachers and peers. And asynchronous is something that's been pre-recorded or set up for your child in Canvas um, that they would be doing without the teacher lives. So there's going to be both of those types of opportunities um, during the school day. And both of those types of opportunities count towards attendance. So I know there was lots of questions about attendance um, at some of the town halls at other schools this week. So just wanna throw that out there. If, you're not able to attend a live in-person session, you can still um, participate in something that's been pre-recorded or something that's in the Edgenuity system at, that's asynchronous, and that would still count towards attendance for the day for your child. Right, so the standard you might have seen somewhere, it's three or four hours a day, but that's not all direct instruction from the teacher. Um, they'll be part of that, that is, but if they're making assignments and things for our students to do and get completed and in, that counts towards those three or four hours a day as well. Anything else? Laney, I don't see any questions, so uh, how are we doing? You guys did such a great job. No, no questions. Hi, Jessica. Oh, we got one. Okay. Uh, 
Can any device, PC, Apple, Chrome, etc., be used for the Canvas app? So take that one. Yeah, go ahead. I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> okay, so um, almost any device, Canvas is going to be um, a. It can be web based, and so you can access as long as you can access the internet on a device, you should be able to access Canvas. Um, one of the um, things that we are doing with our, our school devices are awesome because they're already set up for all of our um, software. And then they're also will have our school district filter on them. So it's something that you could then you, trust your child maybe to use during the day while a, a home learning coach is monitoring and then close it and put it away. And it's a school device that might help you separate school um, devices and home devices. I've heard from some parents that that was helpful in the spring. Alina had a question about uh, differentiation, especially in reading and math. And um, the class list that the teachers are going to receive, um, or not on the ones that's posted, but ones that uh, teachers will receive, has, you know, whether it's a tag students or whether they're on an IEP or 504 or any of those kinds of things, yes, the expectation is that teachers will differentiate and meet the needs of the kids that need um, remediation one way or another. And uh, Leslie mentioned um, home learning coach. Let me give you what my interpretation is, because I, I think some people have an idea that the district's going to hire somebody to come to your house and work with your students while they're online. Well, obviously, that's not a learn, home learning coach could be mom, dad, grandma, older brother, sister, somebody that's home or maybe it's the neighbor high school kid that you would have come over. And it could be that um, uh, some parents are getting together, three or four parents together and say, let's have all of our kids meet on, at Sally's house on this day and we'll kind of work together and maybe at uh, Alina's house on a different day and work together. Uh, people can certainly do that kind of thing. Uh, but if a parent were to uh, send me an email and say, and I have none of those resources. My husband and I both work. Uh, I don't have a grandma or a high school kid near, um, and he's really struggling help. Uh, that's when I would look at our staffing and say, do we have an EA or somebody that we can find to that family? Uh, please check in with them. It might be a separate uh, Google Meet. It could be you know, checking in with them. How are you doing on that math? Where are you stuck? Let's look at them together. Leslie, that, is that pretty accurate you're thinking too? Yeah, and there's a whole great page about that on the district website and the FAQs. And there is also a lot more information that we're creating to help parents kind of wrap their brains around what that looks like. So we're going to start sending out more communication. <clears throat> and um, Leslie, maybe you can help me with uh, Marissa's question. What details do we have for self-contained special ed classrooms? Yeah, so our um, basic skills, functional skills, and structured learning program um, are all going to be in comprehensive distance learning um, online um, to begin the year with all of our other students. And we are really working with those teams. And we know that we're going to need to meet with our those IEP teams to really plan for those students to meet their needs. And it's going to be very individualized. Um, I know that our teachers worked really hard to do what they could to support <coughs> students in the spring, but it's also very hard with some of our students not to be in person. And so we know that that um, is a really big need for your children and we're going to do everything we can to meet with them virtually and to um, support you. So I reach out to your case manager to set up an IEP sooner rather than later, I would say is my advice. Great idea. <clears throat> Anything else? So if um, um, if other things come up, uh, please send me an email. I think everyone has my email. And um, in fact, um, did I last time put my email and cell number in the chat box? Let me do that. Oops.
And feel free to give me a call anytime. Got a couple more questions. Okay. Um, what will counseling look like this year? Well, um, one thing I know is that we're going to ask counselors to uh, do some social emotional learning activities um, when we have all the students online at the same time uh, on a, kind of a regular basis. I think during this time, it's uh, pretty important for uh, kids to feel like they have that connection and they know that this is kind of a stressful time, but uh, they have a lot of support and we're going to get through it together. Um, but in terms of counseling services, my belief is that if any parent emailed the counselor and say, um, you know, I'm concerned about my student, here's the issue, and then they would um, kind of go from there. That makes sense, Leslie? Okay. Okay, our next question is, will there be library checkout? Um, Yes, there will. <laughs> so the answer is yes. Uh, how does that work? I mean, um, do they come in one at a time or? Um, no, I will be sending out materials um, to remind students or to show them how uh, to access our library system online, which they okay. can do. Then they'll um, send in a book request, which is done on a Google uh, form and then I will fulfill the request and they will get their books pick, either picked up outside the school or dropped off if there's a, a you know reason for that so um, okay. that's what we did in the spring and um, it works pretty well okay Amy thank you very much I didn't know that uh, John asked about with uh, we delayed testing of IEP because of COVID-19 how is that going to work for the future? Kids need to be in front of someone to do the testing. I haven't heard anything of you, Leslie. Yes, so um, we are, the, the latest uh, update from ODE last week on the 11th um, allows us to start evaluations again. And so that's the plan is we're gonna start in-person evaluations, but in-person is the key phrase there. We're all, so there's a lot of stuff that needs to happen before we can start any sort of in-person expectations um, or requirements and safety and PPE. So we're gonna let the first few weeks of school start so that we all understand what's happening with school. And then that week of October 5th that the district has already communicated out about, it's our big communication week about coming back in person. That's when we're going to aim for communication about evaluations for IEPs, all of our ELPA screeners that are required, all of our in-person stuff that we know that needs to happen that will be individual appointments. So let me tackle uh, Teresa's um, one and then I'll try to tackle Jay's. So in, in regards to Chromebook, I think what uh, we did last year was uh, we assume everyone wants uh, a Chromebook. If uh, a parent says, hey, we've got four computers and laptops and Chromebooks at home, uh, don't need a school one, then they certainly can opt out. We don't, you don't need to take a Chromebook if you don't need one. Um, Jay's question is about the level of parent involvement in online classroom instruction. Jay, I guess what I would recommend is that uh, the parent is there to encourage and to make sure they know the assignment, what it is, and they know how to get started and then touch base with them a little bit later. How are you doing? Can we get it done? Um, you know, kind of where are you stuck? Um, not do the work for them, but uh, encourage them to uh, do the best they can and to try to get through it. And then that's where kind of where we uh, uh, try to uh, support with other resources if a student just isn't getting it and um, they say, boy, could somebody uh, an EA check in with them, they're just really stuck and not getting it at all, then uh, I think we would try to provide some support. Um, also, Rachel asked earlier about the meetings um, and if they can catch up on the beginning of the meeting. Uh, it is recorded. So um, 
Leslie, how the person access that recording? I am going to send it to you and Elizabeth, and then you guys can make it a public meeting that you send out. You can share that link. Okay. So uh, we will do that uh, tomorrow. Great question. So Jessica, will we be able to check out library materials? So that's different than library books. Mostly thinking about books, but um, you guys really answered that question. Oh. I'm not, I don't really, I'm not worried about other materials really. Thank you. So um, sending out the link uh, regarding the, uh, the recording, I will do that uh, tomorrow. Um, Mark Twain's meetings um, are being uploaded to Sewer Falls School District YouTube channel. We'll have to check into that. Um, you know, I think most of the, you know, I hate to, uh, you know, be too redundant, but yeah, I think most of the things, all the things that we're talking about, I try to include in uh, Parent Square as well, so that uh, uh, people, uh, at, during these tough times, I think uh, you can't over communicate. So we will try to get that out as many ways as we can. Uh, Canvas logins. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, we, I can imagine that's going to be until September 14th, but maybe. We still don't have um, our staff members able to log into Canvas or Edgenuity. We are working as quickly as possible. So we are going to get staff logged in so that they can build everything. And then once that's live, then we will pass out student logins. So I wouldn't expect to get your student logins until after school starts for Canvas or, or anything. And the great news is, is we're planning on using a single sign-on again this year. So your student only is going to need to know one login, and then everything will be in there. Great. That's, that's and then, Laura, I saw your question up above about um, parents sitting with their kids during online classes. Why don't you and I plan to connect or, or, or connect with Allison and we can talk things through for you. So Kelly, um, yeah. Uh, why don't uh, you call me tomorrow afternoon and I will walk you through the process of how to get on to Parent Square and all that. That should be easy. Okay, and there's a couple questions about Canvas and logging in. Um, will parents have login to Canvas logins? Um, and then also someone was wondering if they hold, have the same login as Google. Okay, so I am not the tech tech expert here, but I think for single sign on, it's your it's their Google login is going to be how they log into single sign on, and then everything will be through that Google account. So hopefully, I'm speaking correctly. If I'm wrong, I will apologize in advance. And, um, but I think that's the way that we're doing it. That's why we're doing it with staff. And also, are there going to be electives at Robert Frost? There are some, Leslie, do we know what they are this first um, nine weeks? Yeah, we're going to continue to have music and PE for all of our students. Um, we're still obviously working on that schedule, but kind of an I idea we have is that you'll have a, the chance to do PE and music in the afternoons during your asynchronous time so that you can be, um, you can be like active. Um, singing or or running around or doing some of those active activities um, in a time that works best for you that you would choose in your schedule. Um, so PE and music are our two big ones. And then Mrs. Amano is our librarian and she teaches technology classes and eventually we'll roll those out as well and get technology 
um, kind of some introduction to coding and typing and um, internet. We're going to hit internet safety first, so it's not going to be the fun electives, but we're going to get that one done first because it's really important since we're all online. <laughs> yeah, I saw one school in a 10-minute block that said uh, snack, potty, and wiggle. I don't know if I like that, but <laughs> that kind of kind of explains what that time is for. Well, it's uh, nice to see everybody, and you know it's going to be a challenging year. But uh, I have every confidence in uh, our staff and you as a community, and you know, we're going to get through it. And and kids will they'll learn and they'll uh, be resilient. Wes, anything else for the good of the order? <laughs> Sorry, I was typing an email, so I didn't forget to do these things I said I'd follow up on. I don't okay. have anything else for the good of the order. Um, it was nice to see so many of you. And Ed, are you keeping this time or are you changing it for next week? Uh, keeping this one. Um, I've had to change my silver crest time because of uh, conflict with the high school, but uh, I think we keep this. Thursday at six, as long as we do town hall meetings. Okay. All right. Hey, thank you very much. Take care. Bye, everyone. All right. Ed, so I think you push record, so you have to go back in the same way to say stop recording. Got it. You got it. Stop recording. Done. And I'll work with. Um,